Welcome to another video on the digitallifestyle.com. In this video, we're going to have a look at the Acer Chromebook C7. Right, this is the first time I've actually had hands on with a Chromebook. Uh, this isn't the high end spec like the Pixel, uh, this is a, lo a cheap low cost device, around 200 quid, 220 quid, something like that. Um, it looks and feels sort of like your traditional notebook, you know, it's not an ultrabook. It's not particularly slim, I'll we'll have a look in closer detail in a moment, uh, but it is running uh, Google Chrome OS and that's what particularly I want to look at. So no Windows 8, no Windows 7, XP, Mac OS, Linux, anything else, it's Chrome OS which is the Chrome browser. So uh, we're going to have a look at the device and uh, see really how Chrome OS, I've been using it for a couple of days so I'll give some thoughts on that. Okay so here's the, the Chromebook, now if I there's my 11 inch MacBook Air. As you can see, it's a little smaller than that, obviously thicker. But what you do get is full range of ports. So we've got Ethernet, VGA, HDMI, single USB 2 port on that side, dual ports on that side, headphone, and power. The charge is included in the box. Okay, so it's 11 point inch screen, 11.6 inch screen, 1.1 kilograms of weight. Uh, Samsung say six and a half hours battery. I found more like four to five. Uh, as you can see, though, very fast startup. It's booted straight up there. So this is the Acer C7 Chromebook. Um, 11.6 inch display, 1.4 kilograms weight, about four hours of battery. I found that's pretty much where I was getting. Um, so it boots up pretty quick, 10, 20 seconds, something like that. And when you buy it, you get 100 gig of Google Drive for free. This is the Intel powered one, not the ARM powered one. It's about £199 uh, from Google. Right, so first thing, uh, when you power up, you notice you've got the login screen, and uh, my son's been using this, and uh, so we've got multiple profiles. So you can switch between profiles. What it doesn't do is kind of suspend your state like it would in Windows where you switch users. So you are logging off and then back on with a different user. But what it does do is it reloads your Chrome uh, tabs so whatever you were working on at the time it loads those back up so um, so I've got my you know my Google Plus and all the other kind of things that I was in at the time here I'm loaded up and as you would expect uh, Chromebook it just loads Chrome so if you're using Chrome full screen on your Windows machine then this is what you're used to seeing so it's not that different where it does become slightly different is down here at the bottom here where you would expect to have your pinned apps or whatever You've got a Chrome shortcut, Gmail, Google Search, Google Docs, YouTube, and then apps. And then apps are Google Chrome apps which you've installed, which are essentially HTML5 web pages. So if I was to load, um, say, the uh, YouTube app, all it does is take you to the YouTube page. So. If you're using Chrome, then if you're used to using Chrome, then you'll, you'll be familiar with this, and uh, there'll be no issues with that. You see, there's other other apps, so Google Maps or whatever. Um, you just load in the Google Maps app. You're not or web page. Uh, you're not doing anything really clever. But like I said, I spend a lot of time in Chrome, so this this is fine. And uh, I've got my shortcuts, and I've got all the kind of stuff I would need on here. So the things we've got on here, we can switch users as you saw before, and uh, see we've got three hours battery life, and there's settings. Again, settings are just like Chrome, uh, where you can set your, but with some extra stuff like setting your internet connection, you can change the touchpad speed and whatever, but you can also, uh, pretty much looks like your normal settings in Chrome browser. In terms of hardware, the keyboard feels nice uh, to use, not particularly, you know, it's not an expensive keyboard. Uh, I, I like this 11 inch size actually, 11.6 inch size. It would be better if it was thinner, but you know, it's it's a, a cheaper device and if it gets thinner you get to the air and you know, it has double the price, of three or four times probably the price of this. In usability though, it's, it's pretty good actually. Web pages load up fine on here, uh, you can do the scrolling with the trackpad left and right which I like as well, uh, two finger scrolling which I, I use all the time uh, on a Mac so you know that on that side of it, it it's fine, it performs well if you want to do something like picture editing well 
you're not going to be able to load um, Photoshop on here or something like that. You need to use a, a, a web-based one, and there's tons of one there. On Flickr, you can use Avery or whatever. So, now for social networking, yeah, you've got your Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. I use TweetDeck, uh, which uh, which I really like. The downside of all this is you've got to be connected uh, to the internet all the time. So what happens when you're offline? So let's take a look at that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn the wireless off. With Windows machine you're not connected, you have the same problem. But let's say I wanted to write a document, I could just open Word on my Windows machine. On this I'm going to go through to Google Docs. And obviously I can't. Now how about I'm working on this doc, I'm connected to the network now, I'm working on this document in Google Docs and I, let's go offline. So I'm offline now and it's, it's trying to connect and I can't actually work on this. So that is one of the limitations that you get with Chrome. While you're offline, essentially, you can't do anything with it. If I use my Surface, I could open Word up and I'd be happy to, to work offline and then I can upload that whenever I'm ready. So that is one disadvantage, but I tend to find nowadays everything is connected anyway. It does say that um, you can enable Google Drive in offline mode as well. So maybe um, I'll have a look at doing that. I'm using a Google Apps domain, so you've got to change things slightly. You've got to do that through the admin of the domains. If you've got a user account, you can. it's pretty straightforward to do it automatically. So I'll have a look at that later in the video. So a lot of the things that I already use are on here. Uh, your feed readers and everything else. Chrome's a great browser, so it works great for that. And, uh, and what, what I did like about it, I could give it to my kids to play on. They can use it, they can't install anything, they can't um, break it. They can just give it back to me, you know, sign them out and they get signed about their Chrome session. So that side of it is, is really good. Now something else it's got is remote desktop. Um, well, not this, I should say, Chrome, it's the browser it's got its remote desktop. So that is one area where it could actually make it uh, more useful uh, if you need to. So I've got, um, this one I want to show now is the remote desktop on Chrome. So as I mentioned, you know, Chrome hasn't got apps installed and everything else, but what you have got is remote desktops. So on my other computer, I've installed the remote desktop adding for Chrome, uh, extension for Chrome. So that's running on the other machine and I should be able to connect uh, remotely. This is over my LAN, but you can do it over the internet. So you put a pin in that you create. So it connects using your uh, Google account and um, then there's a pin number as well. So that's just looks like it's going to connect now. So here I'm remote controlling my um, it's a Windows 7 machine and it says audio is shared as well, which is quite interesting. So. I'll be interested to see how good that me is for media playback. So let's play a video. Actually, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, obviously, it's playing over land, not over the internet, which would be dependent on your bandwidth, but it plays and so here on the Chrome Chromebook, um, I've got a full Windows experience ish. Uh, so yeah, not not too bad. So useful for a remote controlling machine uh, if you need to get on top onto it to uh, to do any work. Let's disconnect that one. Right now here, offline access is showing, uh, which I mentioned before. So I've enabled it in my Google Apps account so I can go offline now and uh, now I can sync offline docs so now it's doing the sync back with the server so that's that test file that we uh, we created earlier on um, so now let's go offline okay Wi-Fi is off now so with no connection but Here is the document we were working on earlier. So, 
there are limitations to uh, a Chromebook where you're not online, you, a lot of stuff doesn't work. Well, in this case, this does work. So um, you have got some offline facilities on there as well. And there is actually a, an offline Gmail app as well. So that's the Google Chromebook. Uh, this is the Acer C7, about 200 quid, something like that. Kind of a bit of a budget feel to it, but then, you know, 200 quid, it's not bad. And surprisingly, uh, you can do quite a lot with, uh, with Chrome more than kind of I thought I would do initially. It's Chrome browser. If you use Chrome browser, then you're going to be absolutely fine with it. As you see, there are offline features as well. Four hours battery, all your connections, USB, VGA, HDMI. Uh, it's not particularly heavy. It's not ultra light, but nevertheless, good device. I'm sure the high-end device like Pixel would be really good actually and uh, maybe that's a p more appealing now. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel. More information at thedigitallifestyle.com.